Moving particles along lines inside Houdini is something that can be a little bit confusing when you're first starting out, but let's go ahead and take a look at how we can create this type of effect that you're seeing on screen and move some particles along lines inside Houdini. So let's go ahead and dive in here. This project file will be available on Patreon if you're interested. You can go ahead and head on over there and grab the project files to follow along. So let's go ahead and drop down a sphere. This is going to be our base object here. So let's set this to a polygon. Let's change the frequency to something like 50 and just frame that up. We'll drop down a mountain node to give us some change in the actual shape of our object. I'm going to disable the fractal type there. I'm also going to animate this and just play around with the element size and the amplitude, maybe something like that. Let's see what that gives us. So just looking for some, some undulation here into our object. Maybe want to up that a little bit. Maybe something like that. Yeah, that looks good. So just trying to give us some, some randomness to our shape here, have it moving along. I'm also going to change the pulse duration up a little bit just to slow that down just a little bit. So we want to create some circles that we're going to then copy some points to and have those particles kind of move along those lines. So let's drop down a circle. Let's wire this up. Let's also set our, our template there to the mountain node. I'm going to change this to the ZX plane. I'm going to set this to an open arc and just crank up the divisions to like 100. Now, like I said, we're going to have this kind of stick to the surface. So we want to have a ray node that we're going to then ray our object onto or our circle onto our object. So if I have this set to project rays, it's not going to do anything by default because it doesn't have normals on the circle. If I set this to minimum distance, it gives us kind of a weird shape that kind of breaks a little bit there. So you can see not exactly what we're looking for necessarily. And now you could probably make this work if you wanted to, but I want to have this be projected with the normals. So we just need to have our normals pointing towards the center of our scene here. So we'll do a modify normals, which is a node that I created. So if you're interested, you can grab that on Patreon as well. Basically all this is going to be doing though, is setting our normals to be pointing towards the center of our scene. So if I set this to pointing towards by default, it's going to point it towards the origin there and that will just allow this ray node to work properly. If I set this to be a null after this, you can see that this sticks to the surface of the object, but I want to have a bunch of these circles. So let's go ahead and set that up. And actually I want the circle to change size based out on our sphere as well. So let's copy this uniform scale there. Let's just paste this into the uniform scale of our circle. And then we want to drop down a line. And we also want this to be based on the size of our sphere. So let's paste our relative references there. I'm also going to crank up the points to something like eight. That should work. Now, if I take a look at our line here, we want this to be in the center. So let's drop down a match size. That's just going to make sure that it is going uh, centered in our scene so that it is, you know, 0.5 up and 0.5 down from the origin, which is how big our sphere is. We'll just leave that at default. So let's just drop down a copy to points and wire this on up in here. Take a look at what that gives us. So it is doing what we want, except for on the tops and bottoms here, we're getting some weird things going on. That's because it's extending too far. So we do want to just dial that back a little bit. So I'm going to come back to the sphere. I'm going to copy the uniform scale there. I'm going to come into the line and I'm going to subtract a relative reference there. We'll paste that back in. And then I'm just going to multiply this by something like 0.2. And that should fix our issue. So just scaling this down a little bit. And it's going to change based off of the size of our sphere here. So you can see how that affects it. Pretty nifty solution there. Uh, doesn't uh, require too much math, but just a little bit. 
Just make sure that if you crank up the mounts and nose, you might have to change the values in there. So let's go ahead and take these, these circles and let's scale them up a little bit because we don't want them to be directly on the surface of our object. We want them to be a little bit off the surface. So I'm gonna copy our scale X, paste that relative reference into the scale Z and just go ahead and scale this up a little bit. Something like that should be fine. Now we have our circles sticking along the surface, but just scaled out a little bit to have our objects being able to just move along them. Let's tackle that now. So we'll do a point bop in order to do this. So we'll wire in a point bop. I'm also gonna drop down a sphere here. Also going to make this a polygon, crank that up to like 10 in the uniform scale. Let's set this to like, 0.1 and maybe like 0.05 and then let's go ahead and drop down our copy to points oops geometry to copy in the first one and the second one in there so now we can see that we have some spheres being copied along to the points let's actually just drop that down a little bit more 0.03 something like that should work now let's dive into the point VOP here and start building out the movement. So the way that we can create some movement along the lines here is by using a attribute or a primitive attribute. It's called a prim UV when you drop it down. So we'll wire in our output or input one to the file. We'll also wire in the prim number into the prim and we wanna set this equal to the position for the attribute. We'll wire that into our P. And once I've done this, you can see that we have the objects being snapped to the point or one point, I should say. So all of these, I don't wanna bypass that, I guess, but all of them are being snapped to this one singular point. We don't have any movement as I scrub along here. So if we wire in our time into the U, you can see that we're gonna have some movement along here, and then it's gonna stop once it hits 25 frames. So the reason for that is the lines are going to have a value of zero to one for their UV attributes. So we're moving along the U attribute, and that's going to go for 24 frames because our frame rate is gonna be 24 frames. So if you change that, to maybe 30 frames per second, it would last 30 frames. But in this case, it's gonna last 24 frames because that's what our, our project is set to. And we start on frame one, so that would set it equal to 25. So it's going to be in the same place on frame 25 that it is on frame one. But we want that to continue past frame 25. So we'll drop down a modulo node and we just wire that in. And now you can see that we have this continued movement going to be a little bit fast and they're all in one spot here which is not something we want and we're going to start running into some performance issues so let's come back into this copy to points and let's make sure we pack an instance of those so we want to randomize where these points are at or where these particles are going to be at along our lines which let's go ahead and just template those while we're at it and dive back in here so let's change the position randomly just by dropping down an add node. So drop down an add, we're going to add the point number and we also want to give this a random based off of our, sorry, not prim number, point number. And our point number, we're going to give that a random value and we're gonna pipe that into our input there. And you can see now we have them randomly distributed along our lines. But you can see they're moving extremely fast, which is not what we want. So let's go ahead and slow those down. We can do that with a multiply node. We'll take this multiply and we can multiply it by a constant. Let's set this to something like 0.05 should work. So I press play and see that we get some so moving along here, but we want to kind of randomize the speed of these particles as well. 
knowing that them all moving at the same rate. So we can do that with a fit range based off of this random node. So we'll fit this value, which is going to be from zero to one to start off with, because we're randomizing, uh, it's going to be from zero to one. And we'll set the destination min to something like 0.3, because we don't want them to be completely stopped. So we don't want them to be zero. And now if I press play, you can see that we have our particles all kind of moving at different rates, which gives us a cool little look, but they are all moving in the same direction, which may be something I don't want. Maybe I want to randomize the line direction so we can do that pretty easily. Just come back up to the line up here. We're going to do an attribute randomize. We'll set this to direction. So we'll call it and we're going to set this to two values. We want this to be either, we also want it to be one dimensional, sorry. We all want this to be either negative one or one. And once we've done that, we can come back into our point pop, come down here, drop down a bind import. We'll set this equal to direction and we will just multiply our values based on that. So now if I start back over, you can see that we have some particles moving or some of the lines moving in the opposite direction of others. And you can change that seed based on whatever you want and get whichever look that you're going for. But that's kind of the gist of moving them along the lines. Now we can also just drop down an attribute randomize to give us a random P scale. We'll set this to be one dimensional and we'll set it to like, I don't know, point five and point eight maybe i don't know it gives us some randomness to that and that kind of tackles everything the last thing we need to do is just drop down a poly wire to give us our curves here so let's set the divisions up to 10 we'll set our wire radius down to like 0 0.001 give us a really fine line there and we can just merge everything together now so we'll take our object our wires and our points there and now if i go ahead and press play you can see that we have our objects moving along the lines here and i just made this loop simply by animating the amplitude of our our noise there with the the wire radius here as well and the p scale I set to a different value based on the time. So I start set it to zero at the first and last frame. So they all faded in, in the intro animation. And then I went, I don't know, 24 frames or something in and set them equal to their final values. And that just gives you a nice little loop. Pretty easy to set up. But anyways, hopefully this helps you out. I do have a bunch of other videos on Houdini. If you want to learn more about Houdini, I cover a bunch of different things. You can check those out. I also post some stuff on render engines as well so things like karma xpu redshift i'll probably do some stuff on v-ray here in the future but we'll see where time takes us with that but like i said hopefully this helped you out you learned something about moving particles along lines pretty simple setup but when you first start out this is not something that is readily apparent on how to do but again not too difficult once you know how to do it Anyways, like I said, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.